Let us continue with our discussion of uh, uh, basic open sets for the Zariski topology. So uh, let me again recall uh, you start with uh, uh, a polynomial G in n variables and uh, you look at the complement of the 0 locus of G and call it Tg it is called the basic uh, open set defined by G and any uh, open set can be written as a finite union of such basic open sets and then uh, uh, we define the ring of functions on this basic open set to be functions of this form namely these are the polynomial functions uh, multiplied by uh, you know inverting powers of g okay which makes sense because g does not vanish on that locus okay but then the fact is that uh, this uh, this basic open set uh, dg is actually itself isomorphic to an affine variety and uh, uh, i've 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 not defined what uh, uh, an isomorphism of affine varieties is but i'm trying at least i'll try to give you the isomorphism uh, at least at the level of topological spaces and that's this is how we do it we take an uh, the affine n space over k with the usual zariski topology and look at the zero locus of g this is a hypersurface okay if of course if g is irreducible it is a hypersurface if g is not irreducible then it is a union of hypersurfaces okay and uh, 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 it will be a union of hypersurfaces which will be the irreducible components uh, they, are, they will be hypersurfaces corresponding to the irreducible components of g which occur in the factorization of g okay and then the complement of this hypersurface is the affine open set uh, is the is the basic open set dg okay and uh, 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 this dg can be thought of as a closed subset uh, as a closed sub variety of uh, an irreducible closed subset of a larger affine space namely an affine space of dimension 1 more and that is done in the following way uh, you look at the 0 set of g y minus 1 where uh, y is the extra variable that you add to get the ring of functions on this affine space of one dimension more and uh, since this polynomial g y minus 1 is reducible the ideal g generated by g y minus 1 is prime and the 0 set therefore uh, the 0 locus of that polynomial g y minus 1 is a uh, uh, is a hypersurface okay and it is a closed subset of uh, 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 this n plus 1 dimensional affine space and it is uh, it is an irreducible closed subset and its ring of functions is defined uh, uh, to be the ring of polynomials on the ambient affine space divided by the ideal of functions that vanish on that hypersurface which is just the ideal generated by g y minus 1 and the fact is that we have a bijective map uh, from this ba this uh, basic open set here in a n and this reducible closed subset this hypersurface in uh, a n plus 1 so what is happening is that a basic open set in uh, uh, in 
affine n space is being identified with a hypersurface in affine n plus 1 space okay. So uh, it may look at, 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 at first it may look a little confusing because here it is open and there it is closed okay but you must remember that the affine spaces are of different dimensions and you must also remember that uh, the, the ambient affine spaces are of different dimensions but the dimensions of these two spaces of course they match okay see the dimension of a hypersurface uh, is always one time is one always one less than the dimension of the affine space so here it's n plus 1 dimensional affine space and its dimension is one less so its dimension n okay and uh, this is something that i have not told you about but uh, uh, this is something that uh, i'll try to explain to you the dimension of an open set and uh, a non empty of open set uh, is uh, essentially the same as the dimension of uh, 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 i mean it can be uh, the dimension of a non empty open set can be defined as uh, the topological dimension okay and the fact is that uh, uh, the dimension of this uh, will also uh, the dimension of this will also be n okay and that coincides with the dimension of this in fact what will happen is that uh, you know dimension can be defined for any topological space okay it is defined to be uh, the maximal length of, uh, of uh, you know uh, a chain of irreducible closed subsets properly contained uh, in one another uh, each one properly contained in the next and provided you start with uh, uh, you start uh, indexing with 0 and then you take the max length of maximal the maximal such chain okay essentially you should take the length of the maximal such chain and take away one from that okay. So you can define uh, uh, the dimension of a topological space in that sense you can define the dimension of any subset of uh, any topological space and it will turn out that the dimension of a uh, subset is the same as the dimension of the closure of that subset by going to the closure the dimension is not going to change okay and therefore you know if you believe that statement the dimension of d of g will be the same as the dimension of the closure of d of g but then the closure of d of g will be the whole affine space because d of g is a non empty open subset of the affine space and you know any non empty open subset is irreducible and dense in particular it is dense so its closure will be the whole affine space and by going to the closure you do not change the dimension therefore the dimension of this is the same as the dimension of the affine space and the dimension of the affine space is n okay. So this is n dimensional this is also n dimensional so dimensions match okay and I told you it is a it is a matter of exercise uh, it is a good exercise for you to check that this map is actually uh, uh, a homeomorphism. in fact uh, as I was trying to point out in the uh, in the last lecture uh, let me let me say the following thing a n plus yeah, so a n k sits inside a n plus 1 k as uh, it sits inside as a subset which is given by the 0 set of y. So the 0 set of y is uh, it is a hypersurface defined by y which means you are looking at all the points where the uh, where uh, the y coordinate vanishes and all the points where y coordinate vanishes will give you the uh, copy of uh, it will give you this uh, an okay and the fact is that uh, so this is this is the uh, this is the identification okay so an is identified with z z of y the 0 set of y in an plus 1 okay and uh, uh, and mind you this means that you are thinking of an as a uh, an is a hypersurface in an plus 1 and in this case we call it a hyper plane if you want okay it is a hypersurface in an plus 1 because it is a 0 set of a single polynomial okay where the set of points where <coughs> uh, the y coordinate vanishes uh, is precisely a copy of an right and uh, well um, what is happening is that you you also have a projection this is you have a projection map from a n plus 1 into a n and the projection map is the map that takes the n plus 1 coordinates and forgets the last coordinate okay and and the statement is that you take this projection map and restrict it to this closed subset then that gives an isomorphism with this open subset 
okay. So, projection restricted to z of g y minus 1 from z of g y minus 1 to d g is a homeomorphism and you know we will see this later and in fact an isomorphism of varieties. This is something that we will see later because I have to define what isomorphism of varieties is. But then if you believe this then it is and also believe the fact that you know uh, an isomorphism of varieties has to correspond to an isomorphism of their coordinate rings namely rings of functions okay. Then it will tell you that the rings of functions on this and the rings of functions the ring of functions on this and the ring of functions on this have to be the same. So that will tell you the ring of functions on this has to be isomorphic to this but that is also isomorphic to this because of commutative algebra. So it will tell you that the ring of functions on dg uh, is this it is it is correct to define the ring of functions on dg to be like to be this. So uh, a, a nice uh, 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 to see that in a very simple case uh, what you can do is that you can simply take uh, you can just look at uh, uh, the plane uh, a2 and then you can look at the rectangular hyperbola which is given by the 0 set of x y minus 1 this is the x axis this is the y axis okay this x axis actually corresponds to an a1 which is sitting inside a2 by given by the equation y equal to 0 okay and if you take the projection uh, if you take the projection onto the uh, the first coordinate that is you forget the last coordinate okay then what you will get is you will get uh, under the projection the image of this rectangular hyperbola will be the complement of the origin in a1 and that is precisely the uh, affine open set dx the complement of the point where x equal to 0. So uh, projection uh, projection restricted to z of x y minus 1 from z of x y minus 1 to dx which is a1 minus of a1 minus the origin is an isomorphism so this is a very simple uh, uh, diagram that you can always remember that uh, uh, tells you what what's happening more generally so i have taken n equal to 1 and there is a1 sitting as a x axis in inside a2 okay and a1 is sitting as y equal to 0 just like this an is sitting as y equal to 0 in an plus 1 and then you have this projection from an plus 1 to an which is in this case projection from a2 to a1 and this projection is simply given by forgetting the last coordinate which is y that means projection onto the x axis okay and under this projection the 0 set uh, of xy minus the 0 set of gy minus 1 goes to dg for me now g is x so 0 set of xy minus 1 which is the rectangular hyperbola it projects on to the complement of the origin because that is the only point that will not that will be left out okay and uh, 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 and the complement of the origin is of course dx it is a set of all points where x does not vanish and that is the complement of the origin and you get a isomorphism like this okay and uh, the fact that this is an isomorphism of varieties is uh, is a geometric fact and what is the what does the corresponding uh, trans tra what is the translation of this fact into commutative algebra it is just the statement uh, is it is just the statement that if you take the fine coordinate ring of uh, z of x y minus 1 which is uh, k uh, x y by x y minus 1 that is isomorphic to k x localized at x okay which is defined to be the affine coordinate ring of the or uh, the ring of functions on dx okay. So uh, that tells you uh, uh, I mean that gives you uh, a picture in the simplest possible case 
okay as to what is happening and what is happening here the same thing is happening here right fine now uh, so I have given you you know I have given you uh, uh, two lines of justification uh, or uh, two lines to convince you that this definition is correct okay. So let me recall them one is that the, the functions on the uh, open set basic open set dg have to allow uh, uh, in evaluation of negative powers of g okay which is sensible enough because g does not vanish and when a function does not vanish its reciprocal is also valid as a function should be valid as a function okay. So it is natural that you should be able to invert g and if you invert g you are actually localizing at g and this is the ring of functions localized at g. So that is one justification the other justification is d of g is also an affine variety it is isomorphic to an affine variety for which the ring of functions is this which is also isomorphic to this from the sense of commutative algebra. So this is another uh, justification now I will give you yet another justification and this is the justification essentially that it goes on the that goes along the lines of the fact that uh, you must have an isomorphism of affine varieties uh, as uh, equivalent to an isomorphism of their uh, affine coordinate rings okay and so let me recall something from the previous lecture okay. So you see we we did the following thing what we did was we put uh, on, on one side you know we put uh, affine varieties okay and on the other side we put affine coordinate rings which are just uh, coordinate rings of uh, rings of functions of affine varieties okay I mean they are always called as uh, coordinate rings because they essentially are uh, uh, based on the variables which are thought of as coordinates giving coordinates on the ambient affine space and the word affine is used because they are all affine varieties okay they are all considered inside affine space right and uh, uh, and so what is the definition here the definition here is uh, uh, the my original definition on this side was uh, a an irreducible closed subset of affine space. So you know if I started with affine space A and K well I would end up with the affine coordinate ring A so you know this direction the association is given by A of okay. So A of A n is just the polynomial ring in n variables okay and if you give me a irreducible closed subset uh, Z of uh, I or Z of P. Uh, for p a prime ideal in the uh, in the polynomial ring if you take the zero set of p okay that will give me an irreducible closed subset of a n okay. So this is irreducible closed and we call called such an irreducible closed subset as an affine variety a closed irreducible closed subset of some a n and for it the corresponding uh, affine coordinate ring or ring of functions was defined to be a of z of p is equal to uh, the coordinate ring the ring of functions on the ambient affine space the larger affine space divided by the uh, ideal of uh, that variety which is just uh, 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 is just p okay uh, where of course p is p is ideal of z of p. Okay. this how we define now you see and in fact I, I also told you that this fact that this is an irreducible closed sub variety is 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 reflected by showing that from here to here you have a quotient because this is just quotient by the prime ideal p okay and I was trying to tell you that you know uh, you have a more general picture that is on this side uh, whatever you have yeah, there is a reflection of that here this is a geometric picture this is a commutative algebraic picture and I told you that the uh, the uh, the equivalence comes because of uh, an arrow that is going in this direction and I told you that arrow that arrow is actually max spec 
it is given by max spec ok. So, uh, what I told you was well uh, you give me a general uh, affine coordinate ring. So, what is the definition of a general affine coordinate ring? A general affine coordinate ring is defined to be something like this it is a finitely generated k algebra which is a integral domain namely it is a polynomial ring in n variables in any any number of variables not necessarily in any number of but finite number of variables divided by a prime ideal. Why do I want divided by a prime ideal because I want an integral domain and why finitely many variables because I want a finitely generated k algebra. So, on this side the more general definition of affine coordinate ring will be finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains ok. So, you know so let me write that here if you take a finitely generated k algebra uh, there is not enough space here. So, let me write it in the next line finitely generated k algebra uh, that are integral domains ok. This is what you should put on this side in general and what will that be that will be some k of well y 1 etcetera y m modulo some uh, well some p which is a prime ideal ok. And what does this come from this comes from an affine variety that is something that you can very easily uh, see. What is that affine variety you take you take max spec of k y 1 etcetera y m this is nothing but a m ok this is what we saw in the last lecture I told you that this is a what I proved was this is a isomorphism as topological spaces ok. But the I and I told you that that is only half the story in fact it is an isomorphism of even varieties but that is something that I will keep telling you but uh, that is something that I will justify later because I have not defined what isomorphism is on this side ok. But just take it for that. So, if you believe that then this is an isomorphism of varieties ok. But mind you at the set theoretic level this statement is just the Nullstern sets that corresponding to a point with coordinates lambda i you are associating the maximal ideal uh, given by x i minus lambda i generated by x i minus lambda i and that is the notion of such that every maximal ideal is of this form ok. And my and let me recall that max spec was supposed to be the uh, maximal ideals in this ring and uh, uh, the which is a subset of the full spectrum called the prime spectrum which consists of the prime ideals and that spectrum itself has a had a Zariski topology and therefore, the maximal spectrum which is a subspace of that subset of that topological space got an induced topology and with respect to that induced topology this identification become became not just a bijective map, but it became actually a homeomorphism of topological spaces and the most strong than the strongest statement is that this in fact an isomorphism varieties ok. Now, in this what you do is you look at max spec uh, of the of this quotient k of y 1 <coughs> y m mod p then you know this sits inside as a closed subset here and that closed subset actually corresponds to uh, that is an, uh, uh, the identification of z of p uh, which is identified with this this diagram commutes ok. So, this the very identification that associates to every point of a m the maximal ideal in the polynomial ring corresponding maximal ideal a unique maximal ideal in the polynomial ring in m variables will associate uh, to every maximal ideal here I mean to every point here a maximal ideal of the polynomial ring which contains the uh, ideal p because the ideal the maximal ideals in the quotient are precisely the maximal ideals in the parent ring which contain the kernel there is a correspondence. So, this is what is happening in this case ok this is what we saw in the last lecture. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to slightly 
uh, modify see just like just like I am modifying the uh, the uh, objects on this side I am not saying that they are affine coordinate rings when I say they are affine coordinate rings it means that I am already starting with something here and taking its affine coordinate ring but instead of that if I want to independently define it on this side I simply define it like this finitely generated k algebras that are integral domains okay. So in particular what happens is that these guys uh, something like this does come from here okay. But of course uh, the way I defined it it is a completely the, the definition is completely commutative algebra it has got no, no geometry in it okay. I am no I am not making any reference to this side I am not saying that these are uh, affine coordinate they are the rings of functions of some affine varieties but they turn out to be okay. Similarly on this side what I am going to do is I am going to call a variety affine variety if it is isomorphic to an affine variety okay. Now uh, that is again in a way uh, like begging the question but uh, I have not defined what a general variety is okay. but let us let us assume that uh, for the moment you naively accept meant by an isomorphism of varieties and then you say that any variety which is isomorphic to an affine variety should be also be called an affine variety suppose you make that definition then the beautiful thing is that if you look at in a n if you look at this open subset given by d g okay the basic open subset given by d g mind you this is not a closed sub variety of a n it is not a closed sub variety of a n then this also turns out to be an affine variety okay and I told you roughly the story uh, the as I have done there is that this is isomorphic to the set z of g y minus 1 in a bigger affine uh, space space of dimension one more okay and there is a projection like this and under this projection uh, which forgets the last coordinate uh, uh, this is identified with this okay that is what I have uh, that is what I have explained here that is exactly what I have explained here okay. Now if you believe that then it tells you that even open subsets of basic open subsets should also be thought of as affine varieties because they are isomorphic to affine varieties okay. So if you go by this then what I should get on this side is a of d of g and a of d of g is well uh, I have defined it as k uh, x1 etcetera xn localized at g and well there is no problem with this uh, isomorphism because this isomorphism uh, in principle should also give you an isomorphism of rings and that isomorphism is already there from commutative algebra you have an isomorphism of this with uh, k of x1 etcetera xn y you add the extra variable y and divide by g y minus 1 these two are of course isomorphic okay that is something that we have seen there okay and by the way I should tell you that this trick of uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, g uh, which is uh, an affine open as a hypersurface in a affine space of one dimension more is called the Rabinovich trick okay it is called the Rabinovich trick it is a trick of inverting g okay it is just trying to say that uh, uh, see it is a beautiful thing what it tells in commutative algebra is localization by a single element is a quotient see k x1 through xn localized localized at g means you are inverting a single element g it is a localization okay whereas what you have here is the quotient of a polynomial ring in one variable more by a suitable ideal and these two rings are the same so it says that no, it does not say every localization is a quotient what it says is localization as at a single element is always a quotient okay and that uh, that the geometric content of that is that uh, any basic open set is actually an affine variety and that is the reason why people call sets of this form as basic affine open that is the word they use they also add the adjective affine they say basic affine open because it is not just a basic open set it is actually an affine variety in its own right under this identification. Now you know if you want to believe things what you should expect is if I take max spec from here to here I should get back my dg 
okay. So, if I take max spec of this localization I must get dg if, if everything is correct okay if everything fits into the picture properly and that is the case okay. So, in fact if you apply max spec of uh, max spec to this you do get dg and how is that true that is just because of uh, some basic uh, facts from competitive algebra which you must have come across in a first course in competitive algebra namely that uh, 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 namely the following uh, let r be a so I recall let r be a competitive ring with 1. Uh, let S in R be a multiplicative subset let this be a multiplicative subset. So that means that S is a subset of R which contains 1 okay and it is closed under multiplication and it does not contain uh, any nilpotent elements okay it does not contain 0 in particular right and then we have the localization S inverse R this is the localization of R at S what it means is just invert S okay and uh, sometimes people also write it as, as R S inverse okay and the reason why we write it as R S inverse is actually because this is isomorphic to R of you take the polynomial ring in R in as many variables as there are elements of S okay and then you uh, 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 you go modulo S times XS minus 1 the ideal generated by all these S times XS minus 1 where S is in S that is what it is. I mean the point is that I want to invert how do I invert S how do I invert an element what I do is I add a variable and then uh, I add a variable X s X sub small s corresponding to the element small s and then I kill small s times X s minus 1 because when I kill this what I am trying to do is I am in the quotient ring S times X s will be equal to 1 and when a product of elements is 1 it means that each of these elements is a unit. So therefore S has become a unit that means I have inverted S okay this is what is happening and this is a, a this is a again something that you would have learnt in a course in competitive algebra it is very easy to verify okay. Uh, again the map from here to here comes because of the universal property of localization the map from here to here will come because of the universal property of the polynomial ring okay. Now, uh, okay now you see the point is what are the ideals in spec inverse r I mean in uh, the uh, I mean what is the what are the elements of spec of s inverse r what are the ideals in s inverse r. So the the the, the fact is that the every every ideal in s inverse r is of the form s inverse of i where i in r is an ideal So, every ideal in the localization is given by localization of an ideal in the original ring okay. Now what is localization of an ideal it is just uh, uh, you take the ideal uh, and invert elements uh, that you have to invert okay. So, localization of an ideal is uh, particular case of even uh, more general thing namely it is localization of a module. So, in fact if, uh, if M is an R module then you can also make sense of S inverse M S inverse M is simply the localized module S inverse M will become a module over S inverse R and S inverse M will just uh, be a module uh, such that uh, you are allowed to multiply not only by ring elements you are allowed to also divide by elements of the multiplicative set which is equivalent to multiplying by their uh, reciprocals which exist because they are units in the localized ring. Okay. So, this is a fact from community algebra that every ideal is of this form and in fact if you want a non trivial ideal then this i 
uh, if you recall this ideal i should not meet s okay this ideal i should not meet s and uh, further every prime ideal in s inverse r also will be localization of a prime ideal in r that does not meet s so this this uh, this uh, characterization of ideals in the localization coming as localization of ideals in the original ring it will not only hold for ideals it will hold for prime ideals it will also hold for uh, radical ideals okay this is a fact but what we are interested is in the fact that it holds for prime ideals okay so uh, the moral of the story is that uh, uh, if you if we take if we take s to be the subset 1 g g squared where uh, g is a non unit and is not input not 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 uh, nil potent then uh, we usually denote s inverse r as r of uh, r g this is the notation sometimes you also write r of 1 by g r g inverse or r of 1 by g in keeping with this notation r of s inverse okay and uh, what are the ideals in r g they will be the ideals in r localized at g okay and in particular the ideals should not contain g so the prime ideals in r g will be precisely the prime ideals in r which do not contain g okay and now if you apply this to uh, uh, if you apply it to this this localization what it will tell you it will tell you that the max spec of this ring the localization of the polynomial ring in n variables at g, uh, a single polynomial g the maximal spectrum of that namely the prime the I mean the set of maximal ideals there the set of maximal ideals will be precisely those maximal ideals in the original ring uh, it will be in correspondence with the maximal ideals in the original ring which do not contain g okay. So what all this will tell you is that max spec of k x1 through xn localized at g will is can be identified uh, in a bijectic correspondence with the uh, set of all uh, m in max spec of the original ring of the polynomial ring Uh, uh, such that m does not contain g this is what you get so let me erase a little bit of this so that I will get some more space to write so I will have x1 through xn max spec of this uh, uh, with m g not in m so let me draw a line like this right this is what it is so the maximal spectrum of this localization will actually be all those uh, points which correspond to maximal ideals in the original ring of which this is a localization such that m should not contain g okay now you see what what you must understand is that uh, 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 let me see whether I am saying that correctly. Um, so the I, so the 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 ideals in the localization will correspond to the localization of ideals in the original ring that don't meet the uh, multiplicative subset. So uh, so this is correct. So this M will meet uh, this S uh, if and only if some power of G is in M, and that is the same as saying. Uh, g is itself in m because m is a maximal ideal so it is prime so this this so the statement is right okay but then what you must understand is what is this set see if m is not if g is not in m it means that the point m is in dg so this is actually dg what is dg dg corresponds to points in the affine space where g does not vanish okay 
but what does a point in affine space correspond to it corresponds to a maximal ideal ok and the fact that g does not vanish at that point means that g should not belong to that maximal ideal. So, this set is the same as d g ok this set is exactly the same as d g. So, the moral of the story is that if you apply max spec to this you end up getting d g which also tells you therefore, that this is the correct coordinate ring if you take a of d of g and then apply max spec you get back d g that is the third justification for the definition of a of d of g to be the localization at g ok. So, these are these are three uh, justifications as to why this definition is correct ok. But then all this is only to uh, get you a feel of uh, how things are going it helps you to understand that you can make sense of uh, 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 the ring of functions on an open set see because my aim is to go from the geometry side to the algebra side my aim is always to associate rings of functions and from the competitive algebra side if I want to go to the geometry side I, sh I will always look at the maximal spectrum that is how I that is how we are, we are doing it. So, on the geometric side uh, uh, the open sets are also important. So, if you ha give me an open set I, sh I need to know what are the ring of functions what is the ring of functions on that open set ok. Now, that is a question that uh, to answer that question first of all you you break that question down into two pieces. First you realize that in any open set is a finite union of basic open sets and then the idea is that if you know what are the functions on the basic open sets then using this you can get an idea of what will be the functions on open sets ok. So, that is why all this is important right. So, uh, so I hope that convinces you that this definition uh, is, is valid and uh, that these basic open sets are actually basic affine open sets in fact they are affine varieties they can be identified as affine varieties in a in a in an affine space of the of one dimension higher ok fine. So, there is one more thing that I need to tell you and this has got to do with a version of compactness uh, the usual compactness which comes for free in the in the case of Zariski topology uh, and that is the reason why uh, uh, it is called it is not called compactness in Zariski topology it is called quasi compactness uh, that just comes for free and uh, uh, and then you can then you can expect that uh, 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 as it is the case that the corresponding notion for compactness in algebraic geometry is very different it is called completeness or properness ok. So, uh, so let me explain this see in the usual topology uh, uh, what is this uh, uh, what is the definition of uh, 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 compactness of a subset you have a topological space you have a subset when do you say the subset is compact. So, the definition goes uh, the most general definition goes by using open covers the definition is that if you have an open cover of that subset then out of that open cover only a finite sub cover will suffice that is if you are given a collection of open subsets whose union contains this given subset which is supposed to be compact then from that collection of open subsets you can just take fi only finitely many whose union will also contain that subset which is supposed to have the property of compactness. So, the condition of for compactness in topology is every open cover has a finite sub cover admits a finite sub cover ok. Now, the beautiful thing in algebraic geometry is that this is this is there for free ok. So, what happens in algebraic geometry is that uh, 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 you give me a collection uh, of uh, uh, you give me any open cover ok of a subset then a finite subset then a finite sub cover will always be enough ok and the reason is as follows you give me an open cover the union of all the elements in the open cover will be an open set ok the union of all the elements in that open cover will be an open set. But you we have already seen that any such open set is a finite union of basic affine opens ok 
and therefore what will happen is that this open set is a uh, is a uh, it is expressible also as a finite union of basic affi affine opens. Now you intersect each of these finitely many affine opens by that open cover okay and use the fact that an open subset of a uh, of a basic open set is again a basic open set okay and therefore what will happen is that see essentially the fact that any open set can be covered by finitely many basic open sets will tell you that any open cover admits a finite sub cover okay and therefore the moral of the story is that uh, you get any open cover admitting a finite sub cover very trivially in the Zariski topology okay and for that reason this property is not called compactness okay but it is called quasi compactness so let me write that p so uh, so fact the Zariski topology is quasi compact okay that is any open cover uh, admits a finite sub cover whose union is the same as the union of the original open cover okay and this is uh, this fact just follows from the fact that any open set is uh, finite union of uh, basic uh, affine open sets okay. So I um, will uh, there is also a uh, way of looking at this from the commutative algebra point of view which I think you would have come across in an earlier course in competitive algebra but nevertheless uh, uh, I will try to I will try to recall I will rec recollect that okay I will do that in the next lecture so let us stop here.